Hi, this is your host Sapil Bhartia and welcome to TFR Newsroom and we have with us today once again John Murtick, Director of Program Management at the Linux Foundation. John, the Open Mainframe Summit is <laughs> already here. Uh, so let's talk about what are the things that you folks are announcing at the event. So we have a bunch of really interesting announcements. You know, we, we're seeing some member growth um, this year. We're announcing three new members, uh, two of them named, um, EPUM Systems, uh, along with Incom Data Systems. These are vendors definitely in the mainframe space that are, you know, making that transition and really getting involved in the open source, uh, you know, part of the mainframe. Um, and then we also have a, uh, we kind of call a little bit of a mystery um, new member um, and the large uh, member of the financial services industries that's joining um, as well. We can't really reveal their name yet, but uh, we're seeing that as a one piece. We're seeing growth and maturity in our projects. So we've had five new projects come into the foundation this year, um, which is just about actually the same pace as we saw last year, which is really uh, exciting that we're able to keep that up. And in addition, when I talk about maturity, we've had two of our projects, and these are the first two projects we've had this happen, graduate through our entire project life cycle. Um, and you know, many of your listeners will know many of our Linux Foundation and open source projects that have these life cycles in place. You know, what that ends up meaning is that these projects are mature. They can be used in more production sentences, like their code bases but also their community practices are maturing. So they're taking security seriously. They're taking the release process seriously. And they're you know, meeting all of sort of those requirements as, as defined by the Technical Advisory Council. Uh, in addition, we're seeing growth in uh, a few of our projects, namely Zoe, which is you know, not only increasing its uh, Zoe conformance program, we're seeing more and more vendors sign up there. I think we have 14 new vendor offerings this year alone. But they're uh, broadening that program to include a support conformance. So this is similar to you know, programs in the Kubernetes world, like Kubernetes you know, Certified Service Provider, which this is saying ven these vendors, um, which the first two out of the day gate are IBM and Broadcom, have support offerings for Zoe that live up to the standards that are driven from the Zoe community. And that's a good step just towards just mature, you know, more maturity and, you know, more downstream adoption. Uh, so those are really a lot of sort of the key things um, that we're going to be um, announcing. As you were uh, talking about the growth of the project, you know, when we look at a project, there are a couple of components there. There is a community there, which is members. Uh, of course, there's a, there's a code base there. And then there is also a scope of the project, you know, because we are talking about IoT is there, Edge is there. So if I just ask you, if you reflect on just, let's say, one year and this growth, what is driving this growth? What is contributing to this growth? So it's interesting you mentioned things like Edge, um, because I think one, one thing that this project has went through is a look of, hey, we've made it five years. What do the next five years look like? And the recognition that they had in all of this was this project has a purpose of being an interconnection between mainframe and the rest of enterprise IT, because what they noticed was that the enterprises they're working with, the really forward at thinking enterprises out there, they're more and more committing to a hybrid IT strategy. You know, they're bringing edge computing, cloud computing, all of these different technologies together, and they're using that as a unique differentiator between them and their competitors. And the, the challenge has always been, how does mainframe play into this? And, you know, as this project has really went through this year, it's realized, hey, that's that's our that's our purpose. Like that's where we fit in. Like all the open source we drive, it's making that connection. Zoe, I mean, Zoe is spot on in that. Uh, the Cobol programming course, which was launched last year and um, and it graduates this has graduated this year, teaches you to use Cobol writing through VS Code. You know, that's another thing helping fit that gap and helping make that interconnection. So that is the thing that really has stood out to me. And even as we were planning for this event. Uh, we, we we saw talks and we even purposely sourced talks that are exploring all those adjacent areas. So we have John O. Bacon speaking on open culture and community. Uh, you know, we have Jason Shepard from you know, Zeta speaking about uh, IoT and Edge. Um, we have speakers from the Continuous Delivery Foundation, um, you know, talking DevOps and 
uh, cloud native delivery. Uh, we have, you know, speaking from open source and the finance, um, you know, open source security, um, all of these different pieces here, which, I mean, I know you probably haven't been to a ton of mainframe conferences, but you never see these people speak at a mainframe conference. So having them here is really, to me, the mind change and the transition that we're starting to see happen in this community. And talks like this are really going to help draw that community back into that larger conversation. There are so much to unpack there. So I will just go a bit one by one. Let's just pick COBOL for a second. Of course, uh, you, you mentioned the, the, the programming course, which was also kind of uh, the kind of attention it got was impressive. And then you folks also released the COBOL survey results. So I want to, uh, if you can quickly talk about uh, the programming course, and then we can also talk about uh, the results of uh, the survey. What did you find there? Yeah, so the, Co uh, the COBOL programming course, it's continuing to get a ton of traction. Uh, there's been a few uh, mentees this year and last that uh, worked and contributed um, a bunch of you know great materials. What we're seeing there is they're expanding a lot of their breadth. You know, at first they started with a very simple 101 course, and now they're starting to kind of get sort of to that 200 level of materials and really starting to help build that out. And they're looking at, you know, more and more ways to have this, you know, sort of distributed out there. Um, you know, they already have the course on Coursera and some other platforms. You know, they're exploring additional platforms to bring this to as well. And we just continue to see that as just having steady growth, new learners coming in, um, and those learners are transitioning to people filling in COBOL roles. So we're seeing that full life cycle starting to come through. And the, the working group, I think, is just such a great complement to what they're doing because there just has never been sort of, and maybe there hasn't been, I guess, in a long time, this just sort of center of thinking ahead of where this industry is going and understanding it. And the survey results, which I... I want to be very kind to the people that put this together and have a great talk at the session that will go into details. But what I will say is there are billions and billions and billions of production COBOL in still use. And what is interesting is the last time sort of a similar survey was done, um, I think it was like eight or 10 at least years ago. And the number of lines reported then versus now has actually significantly increased. So there is more investment actually happening um, within COBOL. And we're seeing it across a ton of key industries, um, financial, transportation, manufacturing, um, you know, you name it, we're, we're seeing those as still very focal industries. So I would definitely come to the, come to the summit to learn more about the results of that because there is some real, real fascinating pieces that is just reemphasizing the point of how central COBOL really is to our society, but it's not a legacy language of importance. It's actively being invested in. If I ask you that, you know, even when we covered the event last year, the interest in COBOL has kind of grown, you know, people are caring more about, and you also alluded to that. So if I can ask you, you know, that once again, what is driving that? Even if I look back at when this really um, hit our our collective consciousness, um, what I think we saw is there has always sort of been this code in there and, and already, you know, within our industry. Um, but it, it just was so much sort of in the background and was just so much, you know, not, you know, directly thought about that when it came out in the forefront, you know, all of a sudden everybody's paying attention a ton. What I think we're starting to see here is, you know, tools and we kind of, you could almost say the COBOL's, you know, kind of maybe in the early stages of, you know, when we first started the open mainframe project and we were having to have sort of that same level of conversation where people thought these mainframes were, you know, nothing was going on with them and didn't even know they were still existing. And now that COBOL's coming to that forefront, the, the investment is turning active um, with that the innovation starts to turn itself up some as well. You know, we see a new project earlier this year, COBOL Check, which is bringing test-driven development to the platform. And when you start to when, when you start to see people paying attention, that's when the technologies come in. And that's sort of where the forward thinking starts to come in and the ball starts rolling. So, you know, I it's, you know, like I said, this code's always been there. It's not been in front of us, but now that COBOL is really in front of us now, 
now it's starting to become something that, hey, we care a lot about. Hey, we have a lot of interest in. Um, hey, we really want to continue to invest in this because we realize how important it really is. The second project that I want to talk to you about was Zoe. Uh, it, it, it's, you know, it's, it's still evolving. Uh, tell me, uh, what do you have in the pipeline? Of course, it's an open source project. Everybody can go and check it out. But I, if I ask you from your perspective, what can we expect from the community for this year? And uh, of course, at the event, if you can point at some specific sessions that people should attend. Um, you know, session wise, boy, it is it is always hard for me to say pick one Zoe session um, and, you know, this is the one you, you want to you know really attend here. Um, you know, that's a great question there. Um, I would I would think if I'm thinking about Zoe sessions, you know, one is as I look at a bit of the keynote, um, you know, from Broadcom, where it's really talking about you know, some of its journey um, to the open modern mainframe, because Zoe is just sort of a key part of that. And I think that that tells a little bit of a story of where an enterprise is coming in to it. But then I also start to look at some some talks that are coming from folks that are getting a little bit new into the Zoe community. You know, Ray Cole from BMC talking about their workflow wizard, um, you know, project that they contributed and, you know, really BMC's first foray into open source and into the open mainframe project. Um, you know, there's gonna be a lot of great talks here on, uh, you know, things, uh, you know, like where uh, the Zebra project, for example, that is, you know, from Viacom Infinity. Um, that again is a great, that's a great example of a mentorship project that turned into a new part of Zoe that's continuing to be invested in. And, you know, there's just more and more like that, that I, you know, getting into that, there's going to be some talks in the Zoe Explorer, containerization and DevOps with Zoe. So, you know, we're, there's going to be some things you want to check out um, for sure. Uh, John, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about the upcoming summit. And I'll see you after the summit. Thank you. Thank you.